So we'll, we'll oh. start with just, just, just this. No, this is very fancy, mm-hmm. and this is Restream. So what re- thing about Restream is Restream is like a better stream yard for, like, on a free level, because you can, like, this is on Facebook, this is on Twitch right now, and, you know, you can kind of like, you, you can stream three channels for free. I'm just focusing primarily on Twitch and, and Facebook for now. Um, Facebook is interesting because I I, I I look at Facebook and I kind of see see for myself that it's a very um, I, I, I'm trying to get away. like Facebook is an odd animal at this point. I like the I like the um, quote unquote social aspects of Facebook, right? Um, I don't want to put money into that evil machine, so I probably will not. So when I start doing advertisements, it's it's probably not going to be anywhere near Facebook because it's just like I so I, I have a I Twitter does this too but Twitter I find is less nefarious than Facebook and that's weird to say it's like it's like it's like Twitter is the troll under the bridge and Facebook is like the giant fat troll you can see coming a mile away you just know it's just like they're just it's slimy and disgusting and everything just kind of you can literally see the ooze it leaves in its wake, right? It's just going down this like toxic little road, and you're like, "What the fuck did we sign our hook ourselves up to?" Like, yeah, we have this weird like human beings. We have this weird habit of aligning ourselves with like literally the nastiest shit. I I don't fully understand. Like, we have this weird mentality. They're big and strong, and they protect us, but they don't give a shit about us. Like, that's the yeah. thing. It's like, like, it's like this giant ant, and it's like this giant, and we're like ants, and we're like, well, no one's gonna mess with the giant. That that, that might be true, but the giant don't care about us either. It's, just, it's gonna stomp us if, if we're not smart. But we can live with the giant, or something. I don't know. Yeah, I uh, I don't like using Facebook for m- most of those reasons, and uh, it's really hard to get any growth on Facebook unless you're willing to send Facebook money, and I flat out refuse. I will not. So, to anyone just walk watching and listening, welcome to this episode. Just joshing. This is the amazing Sonia. I'm gonna say Carrier. Uh, Carrier. Oh yeah, Carrier. yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, so Ms. Sonia Carey, she, she, I really enjoyed meeting her at CanCon a couple years, like, a, yeah, a couple years ago. It was a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah, we missed this latest CanCon because of the plague. Yeah, well, yes, this plague, strange, whatever. I, 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 I. I think in like five years, we're going to conclude that we all lost our minds is what we thought they're going to conclude. And we're going to look at that. We're going to look back on this and hopefully say never again. That's, that's kind of like my secret, secret hope. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm not the problem. See, here, here's the thing, right? Like I, I'm, I've, I've always, I put myself kind of somewhere in the middle. I, I, I kind of like, I, I acknowledge there's a, there's, there's a disease, but at the same time, I don't trust my leaders to tie their shoes. So it's really hard to take anything they say seriously. Like, and that's kind of where I'm at with that. It's like, how can I trust you to fix this? This is particularly true of Ontario. Ontario and Alberta are special. <laughs> I am not impressed, to say the least. No, I, I like, like, like that's that's the thing. It's like, like, how, like how, right? <laughs> like, 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 what am I? Like, what am I supposed to tell somebody about this? Like, we have, like, literally, like, speaking of trolls under the bridge, openly, actually, an open troll. We have an open troll in in, in, in politics, yeah. right? And, and, and we have another one in Alberta. And we got, and I'm not, I'm not like, I'm like, nailing everybody else, because honestly, everybody's guilty on some level on this. The fact that we let kids go to school kind of condemns them all. But, yes. but it's like, like I look at this and I'm like, I, I I don't think there's enough alcohol. I just really don't think there's enough alcohol or drugs to make sense of the strange little world we have found ourselves in. Yeah, and, it feels like know, that. Yeah. So now, if you don't understand it, help me because I don't. And if I, um, it, I don't understand it, I I think currently our political leaders are incredibly short-sighted. Mm-hmm. Um, opting for 
uh, maximum gains right now, no matter what it might cost down the road. Mm -hmm. And of course, what it's cost is thousands of lives. Among other things, yes. Among other things. Um, and I just think it's so odd that you would open up the economy when, if you really think about it, dead people can't buy things. People who have been permanently disabled by this disease won't be able to go back to work in the same function that they used to be able to. This opening up now to save the economy is going to screw us so badly down the road. And it boggles my mind that so the people that, in power have not thought of that. So, so that's, the, that's the one side of the coin. Do you want to hear the other equally nefarious side of the coin? You sure. Yeah, because it, it, this is the other terrible side of it, right? So the longer we're locked down, the more we're, because we don't have a lot of small businesses infrastructure in North America anymore. So the longer, the longer we're locked down, the more we're reliant we are on the bigger companies to take care of everything. So now we've, we've created this really interesting little thing is the longer we're locked down, the more wealth gets hoarded in one spot, right? So even when coming out of this, everybody's going to come out of this a lot poorer than when they started. Now, yeah, except that, for right, a few at the top. Yeah, except, exactly. Now, it didn't have to be this way, but that's uh, – so it's it's – so like i said it, it, it it's it's a pickle because on the one hand right I, I, on the one hand yeah you don't want more people to die on the other hand everybody going poor is also going to make people die too so and and that's the thing like there's there's not a so in india right so they during the during the, the the plague there the small businesses there actually went and actually became a lot of the help in the local area that's where small businesses were really really good because no like big companies don't give a shit about local they just don't but some but local businesses care about local because that's their customer base right so is in india yeah you know, a lot of small businesses work, work together helped out i have friends like in pakistan india and stuff like that and they've been telling me this stuff so what's what happens is right you have this, you, so you have this network of support for these nations that are like for the local area. So maybe not everyone's working, but the people that are working, they're working together in this neighborhood. And as a result, anything, those local businesses are going to come out stronger because they were there when things were super, super, super tough. Right? Yeah. Right? That's how it's supposed to be. Right? We don't have either. Right? So it, it so it's, it's in so for me it's like i don't know what to tell anyone like i i just don't because it, it's like i can't tell you to stay home because you might need to make a living i can't tell you to i can't tell you to um like you know um you know go out because you might get sick you can't win like that, like I, 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 the one conclusion I, I came out I, I across with this is you can't win. The game is rigged either way, and it seems in North America. So the only thing I've done in this is just do the best you can, and that's it. That's, that's really all you, all you can do. Exactly. Is the best you can. Yeah, yeah. that's it. And, yeah, and I, uh, I have to work because mm -hmm. you know I have to pay rent, etc. And I'm very, very fortunate that I can work. I mean, but going to and from my job, I got COVID mm -hmm. and it was not fun. I don't recommend it. And I am one of the lucky ones, like seriously, very, very lucky. I didn't require hospitalization or anything like that. And I'm very, very glad. And it also appears that my heart and my lungs are fine because I can run a 5K, well, run a 5K and it's okay. Um, so I was one of the lucky ones, but I am... I'm angry that I had to go through that at all. Yeah, well, it and and I get that, right? I've been working often, like I've been freelancing, but I've been doing temp works. I've been going out and working, like I haven't gotten anything. I almost never get sick. Right? Yeah. The one thing, the one thing I really have going for me is my immune system's like through the roof, and as a result, um, as a result, it's like even. If, I'm not saying I, I'm, I'm immortal or invincible, but I'm far less concerned about it than maybe I should be. <laughs> so that's because that's yeah, because I've had like one flu in 20 years. Like I don't get sex. I yeah, he's, 
I wasn't concerned for me because I was before I got sick and after I'm relative relatively young, a relatively fit, healthy person. I eat well. I exercise, sort of. I <laughs> generally take care of myself. <laughs> so I wasn't worried about me. What stresses me out is the thought that. I'm walking around infecting a whole bunch of other people. But, but that's but, what upsets me. But but on the flip side, what can you do? You're not exactly. What can you do? The best you right, can. Like I. You're, you're, yeah, and and like I remember this because we were talking on your stream about this a little bit, right? You can't beat yourself up. I mean, there's it's it's not. You don't win doing that either. No. Right. No. Right. But right. Yeah. 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 You don't. Like it, it's 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 very um. It's very uh. How do I put this? It's counterintuitive. Like, you, you, like the reality of the situation is, like, as human beings, this is the end of our COVID therapy session. I think, because I, I, I think, I think, I think we're all sick to death of this shit. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, I like I. For me, for me, I just, I just really like we are meant to connect. Like, there's, there's one thing, and there's like that's just the way it is, and and like. In one very real sense, this isn't new. And what I mean by that is, right, there's a cycle of this. There's always new diseases, new things come about, whether this was man-made, whether this doesn't really matter. The fact of the matter is we connect just our very nature. There's, there are points in history where there's a pause, but then the pause ends. Like it just, it just ends, whether there's a cure, there's no cure because ultimately right um ultimately life goes on and in one sense right i mean i'm gonna like my goal at the end of this year is to start traveling and just doing stuff because really it doesn't matter like i i'm kind of like i'm crazy fearless I've, I've 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 seen the shadow of the reaper i've been i've had i've had a unique little illness that kind of made me look at mortality a lot differently than it did so i've been fragile and all these things i know life's fragile life has always been fragile like always it's not has never ever changed this is just the latest example of that right there are people that live with these with like like you look at tuberculosis you look at SARS you look at all these things that, that are go on in the world on a regular basis right life goes on in spite of all those things and life will appear too what 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 we have to look i mean in one sense what this was reason why the world shut down was this wasn't just a third world problem this was a this was a whole world problem this has been just in the third world life would have gone on and no one would have noticed like well, and for that, us yes yeah yeah <laughs> and no one would have noticed and that's the thing right and, and and that i think is this is the first time this is the first time north america's really had to notice since the 70s um, you know, and like, it's funny how history repeats itself somewhat, but I mean, it's, but that's, but that's where we're at. Like, so, I mean, in one sense, nothing's going to change and this will pass. Like, I don't see us being in this position right now at towards the end of this year where we're kind of coming to that. We might not be fully out, but we're not going to be fully in this anymore. I think by the end of this year and, uh, you know, I, I, and then life will go on. And then probably sometime next year, concerts and stuff will come back. We'll be able to hang out, oh, do all kinds of do kind do, do kinds of probably weird forms of debauchery for like the next like for the next year because we haven't seen each other in like for 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 so long. <laughs> you sound like it's, it's so true, right? And then and then and then when it's and then when that's over and when that's done, um, you know, life will go on, and then something else will happen, and then and then we will do a lot of the same things we did here before. I just hope, like my sincere hope, is honestly, no matter where you stand, what you do, you're just kinder to each other. Because really, at the end of the day, who truly gives a shit? Do what you love. Be with people you love. Really, the rest of it will work itself out. Hmm. I just hope it doesn't take too many people down along the way, is my hope. I'm terrified for my dad, who is high risk. Yeah, well, I, and that's it's understandable, but I'm sure you, even he would tell you at some point too. It's like you gotta live your life. Like I've lived mine. Oh, yeah, no, he's already said that. He's like, yeah, if so I get I mean, it, you go. I get yeah, it, you yeah, go. Yeah, my yeah, dad, yeah. that is not cool. Shh, shh, don't shh, no. 
but, 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 but that's, but that's because again, like we only hear once, right? There's only going to yeah. be one you, right? There's only going to be one awesome Sonya who obviously <laughs> tries to kill things on Assassin's Creed. We're going to talk about that because that is hilarious. You honestly <laughs> should make dialogue based on that. Like seriously, if you wrote stories based on the ineptitude of your assassin of being a spy. I'm a spy. Actually, that's, a, that's not a bad idea. Oh, you should, inept you should, assassin. I, I, I'm not even kidding. Your commentary cracks me up. I'm glad. Like, you, you, no, you'll go around. You're like, oh shit, I'm a spy. You have to kill somebody. You grab the body, you dump it. I remember this one thing I watched. I, I was this was this was like this was incredible to watch because you get caught again. You'd have to kill that person. You like you had like a pile of bodies in the same spot. Like somebody or something. Like like, <laughs> like I was looking at that and I was looking at like this seems like a lot of work. Like you would think as an assassin, right? You'd be better at not being seen because I mean your assassin has to be playing strong. Like, let's be let's be fair. Like you you made your assassin strong because. I mean, you, you didn't just kill like thin people. You killed fat friars. You killed you killed everybody. Like there was no discrimination there. And, and, and the thing, like like ser like seriously, the, the logistics, the logistics of of you just like like that alone is enough story fodder forever. Like you could literally like. Have you ever read uh, Flashman? I'm not. No. Okay, so Flash is this cowardly guy is, that goes travels through time and goes to different kinds of points in history. Like it's it's kind of really cool. Like Flash is like the epitome of cowardice. It, it's an old style book. Like you have like the inept the inept the assassin. So you can like create like your own little fictional world where he's hired to do all kinds of like these weird jobs, but he's terribly awkward at his gig. Like he's good at it because he still walks away from every gig. But he's noisy. Like I mean, like legitimately <laughs> noisy. And, and 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 like you have like there's 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 gold there. Like I watch you. I listen to your commentary. Because, like oh shit, I got caught. Bang! It's like okay, guy, take you away, take you away. Don't get seen. Don't get seen. Like 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 you could literally do like a whole story with all the various thoughts of the assassin here. Of uh, the assassin, like just have a little bit of like dialogue to set up the setting. So people could actually see how you fail, and it's just, just literally, it's almost like, a, like, um, like just a comedy of errors, like all the way through it, and and you could literally, I'm not even kidding you, like I'm so not kidding you. Um, I'm now imagining uh, a slightly more vicious crunk. Mm -hmm. Just some himbo assassin that sings his own theme song as he's hauling bodies away. <laughs> I, 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 I'm serious, man. Like you, like like your commentary is amazing. Like, oh, like, thank like, you. Like, I'm like, glad you think so. Like 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 your your tagline is incredible. Awkwardly playing. It's like the, like seriously, the awkward assassin. Like yeah, you, you already have. Like I, I, the only reason I haven't outright stolen it is because you do it better than I do, and you should like you should like you know. Yeah, and, and, and I'm telling you here on the air, this is from me to you, from one friend to another, you really should write that story. Because oh, you, Steve. because, because it, A, I think you'd find it, I think you would find um, yourself having a great time doing it. And two, you literally have experienced like all those hours of gaming to pull your pull upon. <laughs> I think you'd have a blast. I mean, video games aren't the real world, thank God, because I would probably be dead a thousand times over. I am so, the, the whole premise of the live stream, right, is it's just a good time. It's just a bunch of people um, coming together to chat while I play games very poorly <laughs> and talk all the way through it. Your commentary is awesome. Like, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, God. I'm just spouting nonsense as I go along. It's Guys, seriously, you should go on her stream. It is one of, like it like seriously, you will not be able to keep a straight face. I actually had to stop watching the stream because it was too distracting. She was too entertaining for her own good. Because it just was just like, okay, I can't get any writing done. Shit, like uh, I'm not. <laughs> You're I'm welcome. Not doing well, you, you know, it's like when I'm on your stream, but we, we talk back and forth, and they add sometimes a little bit to it. But more and most part, you're just going off on your own thing, and it's like. 
I'm I like seriously, like if I was there, like like you could you could literally I'm not kidding you, you could literally do a presentation of you performing that. People would be like, What is she doing? But when she starts going and like just that gets you in the zone, right? No, no one there be able to keep a straight face. No one. I mean, they just would watch you on the big screen, like watching you like carting bodies away, and she's taking them to, like like this exact place, you know, every single time. It's just like, yeah, I know. It's it, it's almost like, like I'm almost expecting. I I I'm almost expecting like the guards to go, oh shit, there's a serial killer on our hands. <laughs> what the hell? I mean, to be fair, I kind of am. <laughs> yeah, you, well, you, 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 you kind of, you kind of suck at this whole spying part of things because you're always get caught. Like I literally watch you, like did it, did it. It's like I'm, I, in my head, it's like she's gonna move here, even if she shouldn't, but she's going to move here. She just can't help herself. <laughs> then all of a sudden, this guy will come up out of nowhere, and, 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 and it's like, oh shit, he saw me. Okay, gotta get him before he alerts everybody else because you can't take them all on. I mean, that's one thing about that game is you can't take them all on by yourself. You're not like you're not, not Dynasty Warriors or anything like that, um, right? But it's like it's like I watch this. It's like you know, I, I can almost it's almost it's so like predictable and entertaining and. <sighs> I, <laughs> well, I'm glad you find it entertaining because I really enjoy doing it. It's just a fun, dumb thing I do every Friday. <laughs> just at the end of the work week, grab a whiskey or your choice of drink and just play with friends. Yes. Oh, it it, it tears like the legitimate like tears in my oh, eyes. God. <laughs> I don't know if that's a compliment or an indictment no, to my play, but because. because you got me laughing so hard, I'm actually crying a little bit on the inside. It's like, like I'm, I'm not like like I'm not like I'm bad at some games too. Like there are games I'm terrible at, so I will never make fun of you for being bad at a game. Oh no, dude, that's the whole point. No, no, I don't need to make fun of you. I just have to listen to you. It's that I'm entertaining. <laughs> I'll I would never I would never ever like awkwardly play. It's like, well. I, I mean, I love I love that it, it sets the tone perfectly. I'm not sure awkward's the correct word choice, mind you, but it sets the tone so perfectly for what you do. So it's just like, it's like awkward. It's like, no, she's just like, she's like this vicious serial killer that trying to be a spy and just can't do it. Like, she recognizes her true calling. I'm like, okay, I get the job done now. Yeah, I, I called it, I. I called it awkwardly plays, like SNC awkwardly plays, whatever game I'm going to be playing, it's SNC awkwardly plays. And I named it that because I found in the beginning sitting in front of a camera just talking while I was gaming incredibly awkward. It's It was very weird to me. I'm a little better at it now, but I still find it odd sometimes just to be sitting in front of a camera chatting. What helps really is the, the chat in stream when people show up and like make comments and stuff like that. That's yeah. what really helps me. It's something to bounce off and it doesn't feel quite so weird and alone. Like I'm in a room talking to myself. Well, it's, it, it, it's, it's, well, see, I'm very happy that I talk to myself because see, that is a, apparently a sign of sanity. I don't know how true that is, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna write, put that in there just for shits and giggles. But, um, it's no, like I've been doing a podcast. This is like episode 540. I've been doing almost a hundred. I've done almost a hundred of these episodes streaming now, which is kind of cool. Right. That is cool. Yeah. Almost three months worth of streams. And, uh, well, yeah, literally almost th actually three months worth of streams as of today, which is kind of really cool. And, um, but it's different when I'm screaming, when we're having this interaction back and forth live like this, and that, that is, it's very, in one sense, my pre-production and post-production is a lot easier now. But when I was doing like the three, 450 episodes prior to that, I would have to talk by myself in front of nothing. Like I didn't even have a crowd to go with, right? Mm -hmm. you're, just, you're just going out and you're just doing a performance, which is totally fine. And um, yeah, like, 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 um, it's one of those. It's one of those situations where uh, you you get used to it a little bit because it's like it's what you need to do. If I don't talk on a microphone, 
when I'm on the air, it's like this. Like you just hear like the or you hear ambient noise going on there. It's like that's not an introduction. I gotta go at some point. I gotta say, ladies and gentlemen, welcome everyone to this episode. Just joshing. I am your host, Joshua Pentoloresco. I write stuff in podcasts too. And today, ba 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 ba, and then done. Right. And I'm used to it, but it doesn't change the fact that when you're by yourself for like the first however long. And the fact is, I haven't done it in a few months. I've done it a couple times in the last few months, but I also know for a fact that. Um, you know, I know for a fact that, uh, at like when I get back to doing more of that again, it's going to feel awkward all over again because I haven't done it in so long, but it, that's, it's so like, yeah, it's always feels that way. What am I doing? Oh yeah. 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 Which is why I called it like SMC awkwardly plays because it's awkward. I do. I'm not the most natural person in front of a camera. So <laughs> better now, better now. I've been doing it for a little bit. But whew, it's all it's all in the confidence. That's all, honestly yeah. that's what it is. It's all really in the confidence. Like you, like it, like in one sense, streaming is good training for you. Yes, that's true. Although I don't think anything will ever get rid of stage nerves for me ever. No, God, no. You never. No, you, that, like you'll never. I'm nervous every time I do a conversation like this. Every time, because me literally, too. I. Yeah, yeah, but. I love, see, I, I, I'm one of those weird motherfuckers. I love the fear because for me, it's because, because for me, I realized something very, I realized something a long time ago about fear and it's this, when you're a little bit terrified, first off, I'm like Peter Parker. I tell all these jokes. Some of them aren't really that funny, but I mean, I, not, I, I'm like Peter Parker. That's, that's why Peter Parker in comics is always cracking jokes when he's Spider-Man. He's terrified. This is his way. Like he's using humor to cope with his fear. But the other thing too is you're absolutely aware of everything in the moment when you're scared. You care. Like there, there is an immediacy and a vicinity, and there's a high, a little bit of a high there in that fear. Now some people are like, "Oh my god, I can't. I'm frozen." There's that like, like you know, fright. But there's another part of you too that like you're aware of everything, and you care. Like there's a real, genuine. If I didn't give a shit. Like, I, I, I don't get as nervous talking to people that I'm confident that I can get a conversation out of anybody. But, I mean, there's always still that little bit. It's like, what if me and Sonia have nothing to fucking talk about? <laughs> just crickets. So, uh, yeah, it's that tough day at work. Thing. It's like, how about them Maple Leafs? <laughs> right. The sports right. thing with the, they did the thing, right? The, the, the thing with the stick and the puck and, 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 yeah. and, 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 and yeah, like there's always that fear. Like, like not, I mean, I'm good with interviews, but there's always that, there's always that little natural little bit of fear. And then, you know, I should prep a little more sometimes than I do, but at the same time, I've done so many of them, that it's not like I'm, I'm, I'm just comfortable. Like I'm comfortable in that discomfort, but I'm always nervous. You need those nerves. Out of curiosity, have you ever interviewed someone where it's been mostly crickets? Yes. Would you like to oh, know who? Uh, oh. Are you allowed to say on it? Oh yeah, oh yeah, totally. It was it was an episode that aired. It, it wasn't her fault. It's just like I said, this is where this is where the prep really does come into play. Um, I had the opportunity to interview Ellen Datlow, and Ellen is honestly a great human being. I'm not. This is nothing to do with her as a human being. It just when we got on the air and we had a conversation, it just didn't, like, there was just, there was nothing to connect. There was nothing really to break the ice, right? Part of that is her persona when, when I interviewed her too. She's very, like, to the point and, and not, and no knock or like it at all. It's like, you know, it was just one of those times where the conversation just did not click, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes, and sometimes I'll interview like people that are naturally very quiet. And that, like, what I've learned to do with that is just be patient. Most people want to share. The trick with most people is finding where they're comfortable sharing. And once you have that, you work from there. That's why, if you notice, I haven't really asked you a ton of questions so far because I don't need to. I haven't had to pick your brain. We've just been going, <laughs> right? There's not much there to pick, honestly. <laughs> that bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> I'm not gonna let you sell yourself short, nah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
but uh but no like that's like that's the truth right like not every conversation i have is going to work i mean it may be a small percentage but there are some that just don't and you that's part of it heck i've had shows like i i just learn to improvise i have had a show where i was supposed to interview a guest uh, william uh, william Collins. this was my 500th episode he couldn't get on like he tried like we we like every day away we could he just for whatever reason that night he ain't there so i literally wow. had to so i had to improvise on the fly right i mean it, it, every time you do this stuff right that it works at all is always a tiny little bit of a miracle that's how i always treat that's how i always look at it i don't take it for granted right because i've had to i've literally been caught with my pants down not literally but you know what i mean by that and it's just like one of those things where it's like you learn to improvise on the fly um but i just said in my last conversation one that the one blessing we do have and i've learned this too um so in grade seven right at this during like when puberty was starting i got called from the class on the way up, everything went up. And I was like in a t-shirt and like short shorts. There's nowhere, there's nowhere to run and hide. Like it's it's there for all to see. And um I learned a very valuable lesson though with that. And that's this. Ultimately, no one gives a shit. And that's a beautiful thing. So now that I realize like now that I recognize that little bit of freedom, I'm not so terrified of what what could go wrong because i don't it doesn't matter right I, right I, it can go completely back shit down the toilet it doesn't matter what matters is i'm putting the effort out it's it, i'm never gonna bat a thousand but my goal is just to keep swinging and if as long as i'm doing that i'm doing it right does that make sense yes it makes sense yeah. yeah, I wish I could get there because I always care a little too much. And uh, usually uh, it's easier for me via the internet. And I think it might be just because I'm such a horrible introvert. Um, but literally every time I finish an in-person sort of thing like this, or if I'm doing a reading, or if I'm at CanCon and I'm, and I'm on a panel, at the end of the panel, I will basically have to retire to a quiet room or the bathroom or something and have a little minor panic attack <laughs> just to get it all out of my system. Well, it, it's always been that way. Okay. So can I, I'm going to ask two questions now. Just, 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 sure. you don't have to answer them. Just, it just, you're an introvert. What's your best way? Like what's, what way of communication for you is the easiest? Uh, anything text-based. Don't yeah. call me. I hate phone calls so much. <laughs> okay. Uh, so like you don't express stuff like like not pic like like drawing pictures like like like. What I mean by that is what I what I mean by that is like obviously like for you, you're not necessarily comfortable necessarily. Um, speaking like speaking to the stranger is, is awkward for you but no matter what you do have to communicate and everybody like mm -hmm. like my sister's an artist so she, she her communication is very visual like like very visual how she communicates like for you how is it with you like how do you definitely text-based which yeah, is you know it's not why i became a writer okay. okay i mean i do paint and draw and stuff but that's really more for me okay no it's so, not fine I'll put it up on uh, Divin Art or something like that. But I'm really, I, I'm not big into like the okay. artist community the way I am in the writing community. No, that's fair. I, I, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to get like, get the like, again, it's sometimes it's not like talking like this is not necessarily the first language you communicate in. And that's, and what I mean by that, ladies and gentlemen, is we don't always, I have, I'm a, I'm what they call an extroverted introvert. Right. I actually am introverted, but I tend I because of the nature of what I do, I can project very well. But for me, there's there's a, what I I have what is called a battery limit. Right. Yes. If I oh, were, yes. Yeah, yeah, I have a battery limit. And so what happens to me is if I'm out in a big gathering, if I'm in the center of that gathering for too long, I need to I crash. I because I, I, I see and feel everything around me. And it's just after a while, it just takes too much out of me to to process all of that and i need to go 
right? Mm-hmm. That's that's again that I I have that intro. I need that silence a little bit with what I do. So for you, okay, that's the first question. The second question is, um, it's not that I, I, I it's not that I don't care. It's just that. <laughs> No, I, I, I want to make this clear. It's not that I don't care. I just, I don't have what I feel is like a perfectionist streak anymore. Oh, right. right. I, 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 I've destroyed it because it, it gets in the way of everything I do. And then it like, I, I, right. I, 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 the only time I let the perfectionist come out is when I'm working on something. Like when I'm drawing something or when I'm writing something, I'm trying to say it exactly the way I want, want to say it. That's when I care. The rest of the time, like once it's out there, once it's like once I've done working on it, once I've done all, like it's done. I'm not gonna cringe. I I will probably still cringe a little bit sometimes when I see some of my work because I think I'll, I'll never fully escape that. But I also accept the fact too that it's out there. It's not mine anymore. Like it's out there. It people. It's for other people to see it and do and read. And I don't need to. I'm not gonna live and die on that hill anymore, right? Like it's it's over for me. So when you go on the stage or when you go talk to someone like me, right, is there like a perfectionist streak kind of playing inside, like how you want to present yourself, how you want to be perceived as, or is it something else that kind of just makes you, gives you that anxiety? I, I am a terrible perfectionist, but I don't, not in the terms of, not in the way, I, I'm not so calculating okay. that. I'm very worried about how I am coming across or how I'm perceived. I'm just I'm basically me and you can take it or leave it. Yeah. But <laughs> having been bullied almost all my life, you do carry that with you a little bit. You are worried if people think you're a good person or you're decent or interesting. And that's not really, that's not really where my hesitancy comes from. Okay. Because I, I couldn't like like seriously knowing you like I know you like I, I I couldn't imagine anyone picking on you at this point. I just I just I somehow feel I somehow feel like if I was in your vicinity, you give me a phone call because I'm strong and can lift stuff. Listen, I need help. Don't ask questions. It's like, oh no, she's asking me. Good God, what did she do now? <laughs> right? But I mean, like 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 honest honestly, like like. At this point, I can't see it, but I maybe once upon a time was. So I'm gonna ask another fun question here, and it's up to you. Is that why you decided to get into self defense? Like to build uh, that. Confidence? No, actually. Okay. Uh, what got me started was, uh, and, and in martial arts was, uh, I went to university full time, and I worked full time, and in my last year of university, I was kind of just sitting there in my apartment and I had one friend from university and the rest of my life was just school and work. I hadn't done anything for me, basically. So like, you know what? Carlton offers these classes for students. They're relatively cheap. They're not cheap anymore, Carlton, but they were at the time relatively cheap. So I'm like, eh, I'll sign up. For a couple of classes and the two classes i signed up for were argentine tango and kickboxing and i fell in love with kickboxing and from there i progressed through to uh, kickboxing and then uh, chinese weapons and then kickboxing chinese weapons and kung fu yes so so folks like also i is it wrong that i want to see the argentine considering the awkwardly theme we started very earlier are, i want to see that i want to see the tango i, I kind of it want to didn't see. suit me at all you had to I dance know. with people you didn't know it was awful no no no, awful. no. see see the, there's that little perverse like this is the part of me that has a sister as a sibling there's that little perverse part of me that just kind of just wants it's like it's like you, you were there when i did the karaoke right i was not Oh, okay, so I completely destroyed an Aerosmith song, and I just like it died like very quickly because I didn't know what the hell I was doing, right? Like there, there, like there is. So there is like that perverseness. Like we all have that little inner perverseness in, in us. Like if I ever win another Aurora, I have to wear a tutu. 
Pat, like, like, like Pat Flowing actually has got, got me into that. Like, I have no choice. If I ever win the award, I'm gonna have to go up somewhere in the tutu as, as, as a thank you. As like, I made this deal and I didn't put a time limit on it, so I'm stuck. And you can like <laughs> laugh your ass off with this, but you know, De you I know really De want to see that. De De see, it's, it, so now you understand the tango thing with me. It's the exact same impulse. Hmm. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Yeah. It's terrible. Just that's for the record. Fine. It's really bad. That, that, that's fine. But it's but like, we like like I said, we're both human beings and we both have those little impulses like for me, right? I like if if I have to wear that tutu at some point, if I have to wear that tutu, you 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 you're you're gonna you're, you're gonna you're gonna like wherever I have to wear it, whether it's in Ottawa, whether it's in Vancouver, or whether it's in Calgary, right? You know, someone's gonna have a flip phone now. Someone's going to, and everybody's going to watch it because it's me. And everybody is like, he's like, he's so silly. Hell, if my sister's in the audience, she'll probably be the one to send it out. I just, I just, that, that's, that's just the relationship. I mean, though to be fair, the wearing of a tutu is deliberately humorous yeah but my dancing would not be deliberately humorous okay that's fair i'll give you that I, I will give you that i will give you that but you have to give you but you do have to acknowledge that this even though it's not quite the same thing the impulse is the same oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah right, right it's not okay i'll give you that but the impulse is the impulse is not the same right so um so like like because it's, it's interesting to me because I, I'm just like I like you as a person. I don't really oh, think you. It, I don't really think you have anything to worry about, right? I it's amazing. No, and I, I'm serious when I say this. There's a lot of like, there's a lot of people I know in your area that respect the hell out of you, um, right? So yeah, I'm not kidding. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> no, because like like um, so let's see. Heather spoke highly of you. Jag speaks oh, highly of you. Lovely. Oh, that, yeah, but they're both very kind. <laughs> no. He, 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 uh, he, Heather, no, it's not just that you're, no, it's not just that they're being kind. I, I know this. We, I think you've taught Heather. I'm not wrong. Am I wrong on that? With like, like with martial arts, any martial arts stuff? No. No. And you know each other, but you know each other from something along those lines anyway. We met, we met at CanCon actually. She was there with her, okay. with yeah. her first book, if I recall. Yeah, no, I, I know. She was, no, it's like, like, but there's someone else that mentioned, like someone mentioned you as, as a trainer there. And I can't remember who told, who told me about you in that regard. I, yeah, I do teach women's martial arts. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you got a lot of respect. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like, there's no hyperbole there. You do like you make a big difference and oh my God, you're blushing. This is yeah. awesome. <laughs> Stop. For real though. <laughs> Why? Why? Because it's so hard. No, it, I, I, look, I, 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 and I'm saying this, I, I, I just want to, I just want to say it. I, I, I do want to say this just for going forward with whatever I don't worry about it because I've already seen the I've seen the worst that can possibly happen. I mean, the only way I could top that is show up naked. And I think I figured out a way to make that work. I think I would. I'm just that I'm just that crazy. But don't and no one out there, please don't don't dare me. Just don't. I, I, I because I just I'm I'm I'm, I'm <laughs> but but at some point a long time ago i realized that i cannot control how other people see me or view me that's it yes. right, right at some point and i think i think you know this but I, I this is my sincere wish for you to be just sinking in because you're an accomplished individual you're a good writer you're, you you've done a lot you do a lot of great things you deserve more to be perfectly honest with you and oh, thank you yeah you, right right so and I say all this just to say this, like, I don't worry about how other people see you in these times. And I realize you know, this is, this is going to be like not in my head and I'm going to still have that moment tonight and it's fine. <laughs> but honestly, you're an, you're an incredible human being. 
and never Thank doubt you. it. And never doubt that. Say. Never doubt that. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's try okay. something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. I've I've enjoyed I, I've enjoyed lately. Yesterday's guest, I got her laughing so much. I just did I I, I did the, I I started going this way. It's really tempting to try to make you blush a whole bunch of different times now because it's hilarious in a different way. I won't do it because we're gonna move past that point. But <laughs> also, also, at some point down the road, you will see me in person again. I do not want to be turned into a various balloon animals. I just don't <laughs> want to be able to do that. It's like make me blush, will you? You're a <laughs> Oh, no, as long as you're not vicious or mean or anything, oh, no, you're pretty safe. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. But I, 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 I it's, my nature is generally to build people up. It's just what I do. It just, it's, it, and, but it's not hard because honestly, um, you know, it's not hard to look at somebody and see what honestly makes them incredible because on everybody, everybody brings, everybody can do incredibly great things it's just sometimes what you do and what i do is i have a tendency to uh um um i have a tendency like i i'm actually surprised like like maybe maybe it's just what i do but i just can see it like everybody can do take these amazing things incredible things and it's almost like we take it for granted but every one of us can move a mountain i really do believe that so um, I don't know what your goals are um, post this insane, this insane, whatever this is. Uh, but I mean, I know you can do it, right? Whatever, whether that's in writing, whether that's awkwardly gaming. Um, all um, of the above. All of the above? Yeah, okay. it's like in my ideal world, I would be supported either by my awkward gaming or my writing, preferably both. Um, and I would be able to spend my time writing and painting and gaming and doing kind of my thing rather than, you know, having to leave the house at seven o'clock in the morning and then not coming back until six. And then <laughs> can, can, can I ask another, can I ask a weird dumb question? Because you get, you, mm -hmm. you, you had like, where's teaching fit with you? Because you actually, I, I, I do feel like that's something you're, you're big into too, whether, I, whether, whether it is like a martial art or whether it's like i i just feel like you you enjoy helping others like i, I get i that. very much enjoy helping others and it's one yeah. of my the biggest pleasures about teaching a women's martial art classes and it's happened with so many of my students you see these women come in um after a lifetime of being told to make themselves small and quiet and uh finding finding their space and knowing that they can and should fill it. Watching them bloom like that is just, it's a thing of beauty. I love teaching women's martial arts. I, I suppose I do like teaching in general. If yeah. I had the money, probably I would have completed my PhD and be teaching at a university somewhere maybe. I wouldn't mind doing that. Although I don't know if that, I don't know if that quite fits you. But I do see like teaching as I I somehow I somehow feel um, building confidence like you do like in some way uh, somewhere in that line you're good at that. And, oh, thank you. Yeah. I, I mean, I hope so. It's part of yeah being a teacher. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know about you. I've had I mean, I've had a lot of great teachers, good and bad. Um, right? The bad. Oh ones yeah, no, I've had some pretty bad yeah, teachers. Yeah. 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 when they're bad they're bad like oh yeah. god um yes i was a weird kid maybe so but no man you're terrible you're terrible like that's just that's just the way it is um uh but i i i like i said you care like, that's the one thing i really mm -hmm. i really pick up pick up about you is you you give a shit and because you do i just like i couldn't see you just awkwardly playing your rings and being so insular as to write i i just i somehow see you giving back to the community so. yeah I'm, well i'm able to do that a lot through my writing like uh daughters of britain for example i finally did the thing i wanted to do with daughters of britain which is um uh it's set mostly in well sort of in gaul and caledonia what is now caledonia um and there is a project over there where they're real rewilding parts of Caledonia, they're trying to restore 
the forest that was there and used to be covered in forest um, is no longer. Um, so now they're trying to restore it. And what you can do through this company is you can uh, purchase a grove. So basically you've bought, bought this space and then uh, every time you donate something like six pounds, they plant a tree there and sort of to try and grow this forest, regrow this forest. So I have one now and uh, half of all the royalties from Daughters of Britain will be going to rewilding Caledonia. Um, I have another book, um, Sky Road Walker. Um, all of the proceeds from Sky Road Walker go to uh, the other work caring and sharing exchange. Um, I haven't done anything with Skylark yet. I think I might keep that for myself. But I, I mean, you can give back through your writing that way. Oh, yeah, you, you, you can, but I somehow see you physically there. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I, I, I just, I, it, maybe I'm wrong. I, I mean, I, I, I just, I just, I just somehow feel you enjoy it enough that you'd be there. I'll tell you. I my, don't think I'd ever give up teaching martial arts. Yeah. You want to hear mine? Like, here's my plan. Yes. If, I, if, I, if I make my zillions and zillions of dollars and I take over world, the, the world with my podcast and writing, because I have a big mouth, right? Like, I don't know if you heard, they gave me an award for my big mouth. So, I mean, I, I'm good at this somehow, somewhere. But what I, I, I always promised myself to do is that whatever city I lived in, whatever city I, I end up finally settling up and, 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 and living, I'd open up a soup kitchen. Because for me, mm -hmm. um, see, I've been through like like really, really hard times in my life. And I remember like, I, I, like one of the things that I remember um, when I was in Arizona, like when I was in a, a very, very rough way, um, I would have to, I'd have to go 20 miles to the next town to work and there's no car, I had no car and there was no bus and, and, and I'd have to leave early and hope to hitchhike my way into town. Well, I remember going, I remember one, one time um, on my way to work, I stopped by and the owner of this restaurant comes out and says, hey, listen, you want a meal? And I told him, I can't because I couldn't pay for it. Right? I was I was just doing what I could to survive. It's like, and he's like, no, come in, don't worry, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of you. And I've never forgotten that um, because that was not a big thing, but it, it, it definitely helped my evening. It definitely made me, it made my time better in that moment. And it stuck with me. Um, I recognize that like the big problems we have in the world, I don't necessarily have an answer to solving all of them. Um, yeah, I think Debbie does. Well, no, well, no, no one really does. I think, I think we have that. I think we have to look, but there are problems we can all kind of choose. We can't solve every battle, but we can choose, choose the ones we want to fight. And for me, it's just, I look at the fact that I look at the fact that I can go into any city, no matter where it is in Canada, United States, and I can see very poor people being abused and taken advantage of sometimes more so than in, in, in ways that probably be uncomfortable for a lot of people to know. I can't fix that. I don't know how to fix that. But what I can do is maybe give someone a meal, give them a live and excellent. There's something to look forward to. And honestly, when you are down with nothing, it's the little things you look forward to. It's not the big ones. It's the little mm -hmm. things. And if I ever do get to the point where I'm doing incredibly well with my writing and stuff like that. Um, you know, once I'm taken care of, that's probably like I'll be writing and making an ass of myself on the air like this on a regular basis. Probably talk about somewhere down the road. It's like, what awkward game are you playing now? Right. And then, right, you're doing awkwardly. Um, but yeah, that's, that, that's what I'm going to do. Like, I, I realize like, I can do that. I know yeah. I have to know how to do that. So I'll do that. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So there's my master plan. Speaking so, but but I do want to see the awkward assassin by you, the awkward assassin by SM, and completely in Twitch dialogue because it would be hysterical. <laughs> I I cannot emphasize enough how funny you are. Like I, it was it's just like it's amazing to watch, and I, I yeah, like, like no, like it. I I think you you stumbled on something, but I gotta ask. So where does your love of video games come from? Well, that's a really good question. Um, I have no idea. Because growing up, my brother had a console. He had the original Xbox, okay. which then died due to like the, the red, red ring of death. Um, yeah. 
Xbox. Uh, but the replacement <laughs> was much better, yeah. Um, and he was the one who, I mean, he still loves video games. He works for Ubisoft. Like, he's been in the industry since ever. Mm -hmm. um, and I always loved watching video games, but I was, I didn't play them all that often. There was the occasional LAN, LAN thing that we would play at school when Quake was a big thing. We'd run around and play Quake. Um, but that was PvP, and I was terrible at PvP. And so I've kind of felt discouraged. Like maybe gaming wasn't for me. And then finally, I, I watched a number of gamers on YouTube, and somebody was doing a playthrough of Skyrim. And I was looking at this video game, and I'm like, I really want to play that. I just, so that literally watching somebody on YouTube play Skyrim made me buy my Xbox 360. And I played uh, on that until I got my PS4. And now that's what I stream on because you can stream direct. Yes. And it makes it nice and easy. And I don't have to buy any other thing. And I don't have to have a computer in the room with me when I'm streaming. Um, and I've always loved it, but I, certain video games. So I'm not huge on, PvP, so Battle Royale stuff is not my jam. Apex Legends and Fortnite and stuff, it's not for me. I really love narrative games, and I think that comes from my love of stories, obviously, as a writer. And video game writing has some of the best stories I have experienced in a long, long time. So like, I've played games that have made me fall. Mm -hmm on stream <laughs> no I, I i i i can think of a few like uh so i'm a big i'm a big persona guy i love the persona franchise persona right. four and five persona three dealt with like and it's definitely as i mean it, it that one's closer to me in terms of story because again my own personal experiences with my own mortality it dealt with the whole concept of death you're like that your last opponent is literally death you can't win right but it's a big part of like the fact is you know that coming in terms of fact that you know people are going to die that you love and that you're gonna die one day too and that's a like it was such a and the narrative is super strong and the ending the the ending is incredibly sad and beautiful right Nino Kuni uh, the White Witch is one of my favorite like narrative games because it's just, like the first hour something terrible happens to the main character and it's like <sighs> right and then the payoff for that the payoff for that kind of made me go it's like it, because the payoff was so well done um video games have this really unique so i'm a book guy i love comics the video games can do something that literature cannot do and that's interact because the gaming is interaction Mm -hmm. you're, you're you actually encourage your players to invest in whatever game they're into now it can be fortnite or goldeneye for those who are really old like me or duke nukem right oh, duke, right. Nukem. duke nukem hey duke nukem is my favorite pvp game because it's not because i was good at it i suck at pvp games too but the fact is you have like the shrink gun the freeze gun right i once like my favorite kill of all time i had the this guy was armed to teeth could fly could do all this stuff and all i had was my bare hands everybody had taken shots at this guy and couldn't kill him but he was so low on power i walked up behind him i hit him with a judo chop and i got everything it was like it's like yeah that's <laughs> nice right right but all going back to all going to say like for the purposes of narrative the purposes of um um for the purposes of the narrative if I was to, if I was to, how do I put this? There are games that legitimately, because you interact and because you have an investment. I, uh, so the game that made me cry the most was Tales of Zillia 2. Not the first one. First one's good. But the second one is, it made me cry twice. There's the, the right, the first time was, um, there's a boss fight. I don't want to spoil the game too much, but basically your main character doesn't speak throughout the whole, like it is, is one of those like JRPG doesn't speak very much. You do hear him speak in this scene where, where, where he's about to cry, but younger version of himself was out the door. 
and one of the bosses is your older brother and it's brutal because the, na the, the nature of, of what you have to do to save the world requires that you make a choice and the, and the right choice is to beat your brother and he wants you to win that's the thing like it's not it's it's a beautiful it's a beautiful scene because it's about it's about a brother the older brother who has spent his whole life protecting his younger brother letting him go off and having to let him go and then at the end of the game your main character there's there, there's a choice and if you choose correctly your main character makes the exact same choice and it's beautiful like it's incredibly incredibly well done and beautiful you're like wow and i never would have like it, and it's a tales game tales games are funny you win you win the battles you get like all these stupid little skits with all your characters it's just it, it's so but yeah there's a lot of like the video games do not i find sometimes the best art doesn't get the respect it deserves in its own time and i feel like video games is that art today uh, it's gaining respect but i did have to almost like one, I almost wanted to punch George R. R. Martin when he said that uh, video games were not art yet. I'm, I'm not sure what video games he's been experiencing, but they most certainly are. <laughs> it, it, it's a dimension of storytelling he's never going to have to deal with. I he guess, yeah. Well, no, he, he, it's, it's not his time. Like, he, he, I, I, I don't know how old you are. I'm 39. Right, I'm 39. So you might be younger than me. I think you are younger than me. Uh, yeah. But, but here, here's the deal, right? We're coming to that. We're, I'm coming to middle age. And at middle age, I recognize the fact that I can still make changes and adjust and grow accordingly going forward. Or, or, um, or not. I have that choice right now. Now, there, when I want to get about another 10, 20 more years, I'm pretty much going to be who I am. Now, I'm going to be sillier. Because I, I barely give a shit now. I can only imagine what I'm going to be like in like 10 years, my own 20. <laughs> right? Um, but assuming I'm still alive and assuming it's 20, and 20 years has passed, what will be in the world that day will not necessarily be for me anymore. I might still be able to adapt some of it, but it won't be my time anymore. Right? It'll be younger, smarter, better people, I hope. Right, are going to are, are going to are, are are going to go and lead us into a hopefully a better world. At that point, my job is to you know jump out of planes or play or play on trampolines or or go down slippy slides or or I'm not here like like at this point in my I've lived my life and I've done I'll probably still be doing crazy adventures because I'm not I don't. I don't really think like I might settle down at some point in terms of like, you know, having a family, but I don't know if I'm ever going to be like that normal guy with the white picket fence and the lawn. And, and I don't think that's me. Right. But, um, but I do, but I do think that, um, you know, we have a time and we have a time when we can change and grow. And Martin is, is, is an older guy. He's lived his life. He's done very well for himself and kudos to him. I mean, I'm not going to knock him for it, but at the same, at the same, at the same time, he's at that point in his life too, where he doesn't bend that way. He just can't. It's it's kind of like, it's oh, kinda, see, right? no, I don't believe that. I think don't there think is that. no limit to growth and change. I don't think age has anything to do with it. Willingness maybe, but age certainly not. But I, but, but here's, here's, here's a, I don't con I don't disagree with you exactly, but I do know this too, and it's, it's like this: some of our flaws, like we, there. I do think we can always change, but I do believe there are because of how fundamentally who we are, right? There are we come to those like, um, I guess for lack of a better word, these glass ceilings to, to some of these things. We can stretch and we can grow and sometimes we can burst through the ceilings but the older we get the harder that becomes the reason being is because of all the experiences and stuff we've accumulated sometimes sometimes the hardest thing we have to do and i've learned this as i've gotten a little older is unlearn the shit, right and there's only so much you're going to be able to unlearn the older you get that's harder to do 
because See, I'm, I would only agree with that if the supposition then is the older you get, the less curious you become. Because the only way to stop growing is to stop learning and closing your mind to learning is a choice. Because the mm -hmm. world is always full of new and interesting things. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just, I just think, I just think, I just think that it, I just have just seen it with so many people. There gets, comes a point where at 60, you might be, it's harder. At 80, it's even harder. And I, I think, I, yeah, I've seen it too. But then I've, on the other hand, I've seen plenty of older people unlearn stuff in a hurry. Yeah. People in their 70s who were suddenly like, oh, Sure. Maybe we shouldn't call this meeting a power. <laughs> oh shit! Maybe Eskimo is not the word we ought to be to calling the Inuit by. Like, ooh. I've seen people unlearn these things oh, sure. late in life, and if they can do that, anybody can. I think Fair it enough. comes down to willingness. Fair enough. The, the willingness to say, "Oh, hey, maybe I was wrong about this thing." Mm -hmm. I think. Oh yeah. Incurious people. I think you're right. I think it's very difficult for incurious people to push past those glass ceilings, as you call it. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I get very sort of disappointed in people who are incurious because the world is so fascinating. Yeah, There's but so much stuff, and it's going to get even more fascinating. <laughs> oh no, the world always changes. Like the world never changes. Yeah. I, I I actually think it's not death is the constant, change is the constant. Like we always like there's always room for growth and and, and the world never stops. Like we will never this is why I hate perfection. This is why I love mm -hmm. I love growth. Because perfection means that we stop growing and we stop changing. Yeah, well luckily right. perfection is practically impossible. Well, I even if it was, I would you wouldn't want to go down that route. It's not, it's not how the world is meant to be. It, the world is always meant to change. And the moment the world stops changing, we're dead. That's it. I mean, yes, that's yeah. That's why I get angry at people who are language purists, language. which I used to be granted when I was, language before purist. I was curious enough to look it up. But people who are always like the grammar police, even oh. though sometimes it does bother me when people say less when they mean few, I have to remind myself, I understood what they meant perfectly and languages change. And if they don't change, they're dead. And that's upsetting. <laughs> yes. Well, so we're, so I, I, I want to ask a really quick one. Where do you stand on, or, on Orwell's point of view of language? Uh, you're going to have to explain it to me. Cause... Well, Orwell believed that language was actually the origin of thought. That the more words we know, the more things we know, the more we can articulate things. And that the less words we, the next words we knew are used right? The narrower our thoughts became. Oh, oh, that's interesting. I can sort of see where they're coming from, which, yeah. uh, because I mean, if you don't have the vocabulary to describe precisely what it is you're thinking or feeling, it can be very difficult to communicate that to somebody else. Yeah. And so that becomes like a mutual narrowing of understanding of what's going on. That's like, like if you look at 1984, that's the whole premise of it. If you look at think, double think, that whole concept there, it was about reducing the vocabulary to a very set degree of language. Because that, because within that language, you create the confines of thought. And it's an issue. Mm -hmm. So, so what, you brought that up. It's like, it's a, so it's like, that's a fascinating thing because um, as language, so, I mean, it makes sense, therefore, that when a language changes and evolves, it would, not, it would be more inclined to expand, not diminish. And if the language is actually diminishing, is the language actually growing? Uh, it, it, yeah, I've, I've never come across a living language that is diminished. New words are created all the time and old yeah. words are adapted to new meanings. It's not. Yeah. I don't yeah, it, think it's something it, it, we have to it, fear. It, it was just a curiosity now that you've actually kind of like, but you brought that up. It's like, that's interesting. Kind of curious if you've ever, yeah. I, I will. I will. I will fairly warn you. His a lot of his writings are political, and they're genuinely very depressing. But that thought he had, I thought, was always a really fascinating one because it mm -hmm. created right, right. Um, because it's like so personal, like 
like from a fiction standpoint, I'm always fascinated. I, one of my stories I'm always very fascinated with is the Tower of Babel. So like when I, when I so if you, if you understand that, you understand my fascination with the Orwellian concept, one language, like it, like the more, like one language, one mode of thought, one mode of thinking, one mode of feeling, right? And that's, that was, so it's like, yeah, I was just curious more than anything else there. So. Mm. Yeah, this is also why I encourage, I would encourage anybody to learn like second languages because oh, it opens up a different way of viewing the world. No, you, you should, I, I know, well, unfortunately I haven't been able to speak French in like 20 years because I was, I was, oh. I was in the United States and then I was in Alberta. Alberta doesn't exactly like they're, they're I, like, I, this doesn't exactly encourage it. Now, once upon a time, once upon a time, je comprends français comme ci, comme ça. You know, I, I probably would pick it up again, but it's at this point for me, it's about like, like, like the short term, it's about investing myself in some basic things I've neglected to, to do over mm -hmm. the years. But mm -hmm. in the long term, it's like, do I learn French? Do I learn Mandarin? Right? Do I, all right, because why I'm not, not, why not? I could use a Mandarin practice partner. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I need to learn. I need, I need to learn how to how to do the nasty swear words in Mandarin. I can swear in seven languages. So, so. Ah, nice. Because yes, for that I you guess. need for that you need a native Mandarin speaker. They don't yeah. teach you that on Duolingo. <laughs> it's a good way to bond, though. Like it's a great. It way is. To, it is a great way to bond. It is one of the best ways to bond. Tell ask someone to teach you their dirty words. They get like again. They because now you're playing with them. And it's so fun and it's so simple. And at that point, you start the, that path of that broken dialect between you and somebody else, and you grow and you understand. It's it's a wonderful thing. It's not the only way to do it, ladies and gentlemen, but it is surprisingly effective. <laughs> now, I know surprisingly few swear words in other languages, considering how much I cuss yeah, I know. in actuality. I can swear in Arabic, Maltese. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, Apparently the Arabic and the Jewish one, are, 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 the Maltese and the Jewish, like the Israeli ones, are, are very similar. So I can swear there. I can swear a little bit in Vietnamese. I can swear in French, obviously. I can swear in Spanish and obviously English. So I think that's all of them. Yeah, I can swear in English and French. I know like two swear words in German and they're not really all that terrible. I, I, I have a friend of mine, she's a Russian model. I got teachers, like, apparently they have their, their version of fuck has, like, different, like, there's different words for it. So I'm, I like, I like, there's, like, different levels to it. So it's like, I, you know what, that's, that's like, I, yeah, yeah, I, I, I think that'd be fun. So I'm, uh, yeah, it, it's one of those, like, like, that's the thing, right? Like, like, language, language comes in a whole bunch of different ways, right? Like, languages, words, languages, pictures, languages, art. And like I said, it's been funny, like, for me, I just, did illustration for the first time ever. And I'm not saying I'm good at it, but I'm having fun, which is all that really oh. matters. Yeah, yes, right. that's all that actually matters. Yeah, that yeah, you have yeah. fun. I don't know, have you, seen, have, have you seen any of my drunken draws? I've had some pretty cool people come on the show and actually draw, you, and, and if not, you really should. So. Uh, not been on a stream. I have seen them mentioned. Yes. I think I saw a picture you drew of a Ninja Turtle. Yes, I did that, yes. That was that was Mass Roman night. I did a Lego Ultimate Warrior last night. <laughs> uh, like yeah, like well, but here's the thing: it's made me a better storyteller, which is really interesting because now I can look at like it's it's so weird looking at my current work in progress. Like yeah, this has definitely inspired this because I can see and and view how it goes. So it's like, um, it's like uh, how do I put this? Um, it's like now I see things a little bit different and it grows. It has made me grow as both a writer. It's, it's funny how it works. The more things you do, the more you learn, the more you learn, the more you see, the more you see, um, the more you can communicate. And, and actually mm -hmm. now you have the opposite problem. What's the best tool to tell the story? Yeah, that's, that's the thing is finding the right medium for a particular story. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, for that reason, I'm, I'm dabbling a little bit. I'm starting to teach myself how to uh, write a stage play because I have a story that I think works best on stage okay. or at least would make a really cool 
stage play. <laughs> Involve awkward killing. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm slowly teaching myself that while I'm writing other things. Um, and I would like to try and write for video games, but I'm not sure that I have the breadth to be able to do that. Like there's so much involved in it and you have to think of possible player actions and I'm just, I'm not good at that. <laughs> so have you ever heard of top down design? Uh, yes. You know what that is? Vaguely. Okay. So if you've ever decided to write for a game, so because I, I accidentally invented a board game. So I'll, I'll tell you how I figured out how I accidentally invented a board game and we'll, well, well I'm not what I learned. So I was asked to do an Alice in Wonderland or a Lewis Carroll story. I came up with Alice in Wonderland as Greek mythology. Okay, and I told that story. Right? Alice is Pandora. It works surprisingly well. Right? Actually, yes. I can yeah, yeah I can totally see that. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah, it, it works surprisingly very well. And um I'm writing the sequel. I'm hoping to have that done. Like that's gonna be closer to an actual Lewis Carroll style story story, poem, song, terrible singing. If I terribly sing, like as a reading thing, that, that I'm sorry in advance, just letting you know. But um, but the but the the thing about that, right, was I wanted to do like a board game, like um, not quite a chessboard, but like a grid style map, like a Snakes and Ladders. Because again, Alice in Wonderland Snakes and Ladders is actually very apropos as well for different reasons. So that's like, okay. So I had this, I, so this map kind of came in my head. It's like, okay, very cool. Now, how do you play this game? And I'm not kidding. The moment I asked that, I got that answer, like the rules. And what happened was I used my story to dictate the game, right? It, it, so if you, like, for example, if your story is, the, your video game is a horror werewolf style game, right? So what you did that, what you start to do is like, okay, so... I'm doing a werewolf style game. Okay, so what do people expect when they get, to get werewolves? They expect transformations. They expect people with blood and guts. They expect like they expect like a smash up of some kind, right? They expect a hero or heroine. They expect a maiden or man in distress. They expect just just some good clean carnage, like carnage. How can I express that through actions, right? So you took the story, and now you have the elements. Of what, again, of looking at people's expectations and fulfilling. Like, I had, okay, Snakes and Ladders game. They expect Snakes and Ladders. So how can I do it? So I thought to myself, you know, it would be really evil since it's a Snakes and Ladders style game. What if the Snakes and Ladders moved? How would I get them to move? And I thought, you know, I'm an evil prick. Let's roll every time a seven happens. They move. If you look at a two-sided dice, that's the number most likely to roll you're most likely to roll odds are i'm a prick so now the game's completely <laughs> chaotic right it feels but again it adds a very simple degree of chaos to it to a very simple game right i took the expectation you had of snakes and ladders and incorporated just a touch of chaos to it top down right Alice in Wonderland is kind of like this weird, unpredictable little world. I created a weird, little, unpredictable little game that fits into the mode of Alice in Wonderland. Like you could see a story connection there without even trying. So when I well, all of this to go all the way back up to you, if you ever decide to write a video game, since you're not necessarily the most, I don't know how mathematically inclined you are. My gut says probably more than you realize, but but probably not. It's not it's not your training. If you do illustration, you're actually better, more math trained than you realize. Than you realize, but sure, sure, sure. But um, if you don't have the requisite skills, work from the top down design. So, like, what, what I would do is like, okay, write your story. The thing about your story, you're you're telling, right? And then look at the expectations. If you were to do that in a game, what what would a player expect? What would it's not that different like it's still storytelling right you're just you're just what you're doing is you're, you're looking at the stuff you kind of want to do and want to feel and, and and you can get some if not a full game at least an idea of what the mechanics would be so then you can go to your buddies that do video games this is kind of what i'm thinking here it's a top down this i'm kind of want this 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 you'll have some ideas already 
And the cool thing is once you have like a box where people can actually see where you're going with it, you know, like, hey, cool. Have you thought of this, 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 this? And you're like, no, I didn't. But you made it better than what I thought of it. Sweet. And then so you and then collaborations are born and you make the greatest video games in Skyrim. And then, you know, you'd be oh. like, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I just enjoy it as a medium so much. I think it's a fantastic way to tell stories. It, it is. doesn't work for all of no. the sto the stories that are, people are trying to tell. Um, I'm gonna, probably going to get a lot of slack for this, but I don't think with um, Death Stranding that a video game was the best medium for that particular story. I've never played Death Stranding, so I have a new idea. Y yeah. Okay. I mean, it was a. It, it, it's a. It's beautiful. And it's wonderfully twisted and weird. Um, I've really enjoyed that. But there was something absent in the gameplay itself. I, there was a, definitely a story that they were trying to tell. And it's a really good, weird, twisted story that's wonderfully bizarre. But I don't think the video game medium was the best way to tell that particular story. Sometimes the video game medium is also so kind of young. In the sense that, like, like oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 because here's the thing, right? Not from a story, purely like telling a story element of, of video games. Each game kind of has different needs. Oh, they yeah. Look, yeah like, 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 for example, like a game like um, Fallout doesn't, ex you're not playing that for the story. You're playing that to kill your buddies. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I mean, that's what, that's what you're doing. You and your buddies are, are, are fighting each other. When you look at when you look at say Double Dragon, that's a pretty straightforward game. Brother kidnaps girl. You beat up his. You beat, you beat up all his friends until he gives her gives her back. I mean, it's not it's not a very hard it's not a hard concept, right? Right. Don't need a lot of story like there. It it's so I think I think the thing about a video game like like I think about the video game industry in general. I think sometimes they they overshoot or undershoot. The amount of actual story required and finding that balance is much like like putting together a television show because there's so many little pieces involved that can make or break it that that finding that happy the fact that you see a good television show is a little bit of a miracle just a little bit oh, yeah. right um have you ever been on a film set you know how much of a miracle that is um i think it's the same thing with a video game I think because some of the tools are, and, and the language of what a video game is, like the like the like there's a language to cinema because there's like oh, there's a hundred years of of experience. I mean, I mean, video games are like half that age. I mean, seriously, Pong wasn't that far along before I was born. Like, yeah. Like, like I mean, I mean, just to give put this in perspective, like Pong is, is Pong was very much a, uh, you know, um, you know. It, it's not that far away from like 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 this way what 41 years ago maybe no no, no like 43 I'm 39 then, then uh, i was around when there was pac-man and and oh Alabama god yeah and, and and super mario brothers and we're starting to get sophisticated when we're talking about super mario brothers right so i all all, all of which to say is like i think i think one of the things you're, you're feeling i mean i, I just on a perspective per, uh, thing is they're still figuring a lot of this stuff out. I think I think I don't think everything's set in stone yet in video no, games. No, uh, well, that's actually one of the wonderful things about video games yeah. is they are so varied. Um, but yeah, this video game definitely set out to tell a story, and I don't think it was the best medium. I think honestly, a really wonderfully twisted TV series might have worked better, or a movie. Um, but they didn't get. The, the balance between mechanics and story correct well you know as long i mean at least it wasn't superman 64 bad i've never played that don't <laughs> watch 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 the um if you ever have you ever seen the angry video game here on youtube oh yes oh, i had i've watched one of his videos but it was a long long time ago just, 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 just watch him play Superman once. Just, just, just watch it. You'll understand why you should never play that game, like ever. Just don't save yourself some grief and time and effort. It's like you'll ask yourself what we all did. Who made this game? 
why did you make this game? <laughs> right. <laughs> and why did you punish us with this? I mean, you think Superman would you, you think Superman would be like the coolest game ever? Seriously, he flies and can do like everything. Why wouldn't you make that like the coolest game ever? But they can't do it. They just for whatever reason they can't make a Superman game. I, I don't understand. I just don't. They can make a Spider Man game. Spider Man's cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the both of the new Spider-Man games I've watched gameplay of, and it looks really good. Yeah, like Batman, you can make the Batman game. Although Batman's very much eerily similar to like you know Dishonored in the sense you're hiding in the shadows and beating people up. Yeah. yeah or I mean Dishonored, you're killing them, and it's not awkward at well. It, 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 uh, it will be when I play it. Yeah. It's, <laughs> It was when I it was it, it was when I did too because I, I meant to choke a guy out and I hit the wrong button and I decapitated him instead. Oh yeah, the number of times I've done things like press the wrong button. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it happens. It totally does. It totally, totally does. So, have you gotten any rating done in this wonderful time? Actually, yes, but it's not something I think I will publish. It's way longer than anything I've written before, so I'm still writing it. And uh, it's mm, possibly problematic because of elements of other cultures that I've adopted into it. So it's really just something I'm writing to get it out of my brain. Okay. I'm going to send it to, um, to a sensitivity reader just to see, but I mean, hopes aren't high that it's ever going to see the light of day. But I just need to get it out of my brain so I can concentrate on other things. And I have a bunch of story ideas waiting. So I've been fortunate that uh, after the first initial creative paralysis that all of this stress of these times uh, created, I was able to get back into writing. So, yeah, it has been a saving grace, actually. It keeps me sane, keeps my brain working. Okay, so so hmm. Let's let's talk about something a little uh, like serious, to, but not not COVID therapy, not COVID therapy. But we're talking about sensitivity readers and stuff like that. And I'm definitely with you in the sense that that stories are more sophisticated. There's a lot more knowledge and awareness of things than there used to be. But I guess I'm going to ask this: Where, if you're writing about other cultures that are living and breathing? Right, like, do you, do you are you comfortable doing that anymore? Because the fact that you are aware that the, that you will probably make mistakes doing so. Yeah, um, no, no. I think there is a way to do it where it's representation and not appropriation. Mm -hmm. um, and I could use the excuse that it's a fantasy novel, but I'm not comfortable doing that. If I send it to a sensitivity reader and they're like, yeah, actually, this is pretty good. Nothing in it is insulting. Um, feel free to go ahead. Then maybe I might, okay. but may probably not for this story. No, it's, it's, it's again, it's your, it's your decision to do, it's your decision to do whatever you, you want to do with it. Um, like like fantasy fantasy is one of those definitely those genres that requires usually a meta narrative of some kind, and using other cultures to do it is a big, like it's a big part of it. Like I love that's one of the things I love about the Wheel of Time. Like I saw like a lot of my a lot of ancient history being retold in some really neat wonderful ways. Yeah, um, ancient history is one thing. No, but... it's just, ancient history you you have a lot more you have a lot more license to do it because yes. there's no. There's nobody yeah. left to be insulted by it. <laughs> yes. This is why I brought this question up like that, because um, I, I, it's interesting in one sense, like in one very real sense, we're a lot closer in, in some ways than we were in others. Like I've had, I've been able to do interviews in Pakistan, India, uh, you know, Japan, uh, like all over the world. And with people that do not think like I do. Right. And it's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. um, but it does lead to the, like we are in this weird minefield right now of in North America, especially of um, how do we how do we do this correctly, and is there a correct way of doing this? 
Yeah, it's it's a tough thing to do. It's a, it's a tightrope walk. But I mean, also part of the problem is if you're writing about cultures that aren't your own, as somebody who isn't part of that culture, the fact of the matter is my skin colour makes it far more likely that I will be picked up for that story mm -hmm. than someone of a different ethnic like, identity. And that's not right. I mean, that's part of the problem. It wouldn't be a problem if all things were equal, I think, but all things are not equal. No. And in writing this as a white person, um, am I drowning out a much more, uh, uh, am I drowning out the voices of people who have more claim to be writing this stuff than I do, you know? Because if I am, that sucks, that's not right. <laughs> like, and I don't I, want to be that person. I'm in such a weird spot with that one. I remember I watched um, a friend of mine who's been doing like she's just been performing poetry for a very long time and then had another poet friend of mine like go after her for cultural appropriation. And I know that was really wasn't the case at all. It's just one, I, I, I mean, okay, so I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back and forth because it's, it's interesting to me. It's, I, I, it's interesting to me. I remember when I was in Arizona, uh, I, I, I was working at a gas station at the time and uh, my, my boss dreaded this woman coming in the door. This, this woman that was coming in the door because she was counting he's right doing a write-up so she comes in and you know um you know she you know uh white woman coming in just just, just you know seemed very conservative we started talking just because we were just i had nothing really to do and and we were just killing time while she was waiting to get the paperwork and stuff like that and she did like medicine pouches and drums and all these like like these native gifts like they found their way to her right and and, and she does them. she does them just as well and it, it made me realize in one really real sense that I th i'm like gifts are gifts no matter where they come from and no matter who has them so i i so on the one hand i i and going back to going back to my friend with the poetry stuff on the one hand i feel like gifts are gifts no matter where they traditionally come from. But on the other hand, I do see where you're saying there too, is like the, right? It's- Yeah, it's, but yeah, I, get, I kind of get where you're going with that, but I'm assuming that she made them and sold them? Yeah, well, she made them and she made them and sold, she made them and sold them as a, uh, but it was part of it, it's like she helped people heal, like she would be asked to do it. And it was it was a big part of, of um, it wasn't something like it, it, it was just one of those situations where it wasn't something that she necessarily sought out. It's just one of those things where she got a gift and she chose to use it. And and it was and it's an interesting like for me it's an interesting thing because it, it taught me something very, very um we're more connected, I think, than we realize. And I realized that in that moment. Right? Yes. Right? I yeah. I would agree with you there. But the yeah. problem is that might be some indigenous person's livelihood mm -hmm. that she has the privilege of taking. Hmm. I'm not, and not necessarily, and it's not necessarily quite the same either. No. Because I know there's a huge problem with um, like everybody and their aunt is using sage at the moment. And so there's a huge problem with sage because people are just going out and harvesting sage, leaving nothing for the indigenous populations for their own use and also nothing for them to sell as part of their livelihoods, right? And it's not really for us to do that, particularly since they have certain rules around the gathering of sage and when and why and what you're supposed to do when you do it. Uh, that we're just like, oh, sage takes away all the bad energy. And it's well, not well, well right. it, it, it's, but it's not quite that cut and dry either, right? Because I like like uh, there are other like cult like medicinally speaking like historically speaking there they sage has been used to help with the mind just different different cultures have used it for different things how we use it I think I think I think the thing where we I think we're both in fully alignment here there's an ignorance of other there is an ignorance of culture that should not be tolerated I think the question becomes this right 
if I'm using, like we're talking about Sage here, if I'm using Sage because I'm using it to help with depression or maybe I'm, a, I'm someone that practices, I'm not saying I do, but let's say I was someone do, they use Sage a lot in a lot of the things they do. Not like, it's just a part of something that, that I've known something to do. I'm not necessarily, I'm not, that line of what's mine, that cultural appropriation line can get very, very, it's not, the intention's different. You know what I mean? Oh, I don't think, I don't think people who, who do yeah. that necessarily intend to cause harm, but it can still be harmful. Oh, yeah. And I think as people who are not affected by that harm, yeah. we should step back yeah. and let, let the voices that haven't been heard up until now speak. It's not our place to speak. And so with this story that I'm writing, maybe not my place to publish it. Write it, yeah, sure. Get it out of my head because otherwise I'd go insane. It'd be floating around in there forever. Um, but maybe not publish. And I'm okay with that. Because, no, that's you know, fine. no it, it's fine. I, I, I think it's be an interesting one, way to go around, around and about this because it's just, you know, it is, it is a big part of the publishing today. Like that, that question, right? So. Um, yeah, and I do think that I mean, there are so many wonderful speculative fiction out now, and part of what makes it wonderful is the fact that it's not the same five old white dudes writing the stuff. Oh, absolutely. Right? No, all no, no. So new and interesting, and uh, with all these various like cultural things that we're getting from the people publishing the stuff who are from the cultures that they're drawing their inspiration from. I think it's fantastic. Oh, yeah. It's a different but it's I nowhere near sort of the level it ought to be. You're still in favored if you're an old white dude, basically. But that's so at the very, very beginning, and the only time we're gonna mention our COVID therapy part of this whole whole equation here. Right. And that right, I talked about the fact that the longer we are in lockdown the more we feed these big machines that are already in place. I think the honest, the, the honest answer is like, I like N.K. Jemison. I love her voice. It's beautiful. I think she's one of the best authors of fantasy out there. I do not think anyone can do what she does. I love what she's doing in, far, in, in her Green Lantern book, Far Set. That's where I first started reading her, but her novels are fantastic. I love Fonda Lee. I think Fonda Lee is one of the best voices from hand that she reminds me she's got a modern day she reminds me a lot of like um she's got mccaffrey sensibility with like science but she's got like such a unique voice that's just incredible and there's like other people like uh i i, I want to say saladin but i don't know if they got the name right so i'm not gonna say it, but there's so many other voices right now in fantasy where you can in fantasy in particular where you can see different cultures different worlds different ideas different um stories being told but the reality of the situation is until the machine changes and we gotta look at the be honest and critical of the machine we're in right that's never going to real that's going to change at a very 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 slow rate and as long as we feed these machines that's going that change is going to come slower um like that's that's the one thing i've i've recognized about this i think the out ironically enough is the independent movement i mean and like because you because those because the big because what's happening now is because that machine this is what normally happens to machines like this they become narrower they become more more, more focused on those formulas that they know work but as the voices become more and more diverse and they serve other voice other more diversity those machines inevitably will continue to shrink and the new frontiers will continue to open and that's what i think is going to happen more and more as time goes on i don't know that if in five or ten years from now i'm going to want penguin random house or i'm going to want any of those big prizes. maybe i do maybe i still do but i'm going to see them in a much different light than i do even now and even now i can see them being smaller and shrinking and growing i do think that um this is the exciting thing about today more than anything else is that 
we have this really cool renaissance of all these different voices doing all these different things in art. And a lot of it is not even hitting those big places, even in video games. Like I, I am so incredible. Like the independent games that are out there that are being made right now are freaking uh, a game you might really thoroughly enjoy is Into a Dream. Check out they did it. It's really, really cool. What is that? Into a Dream? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Hey, by, by, by my name, Felipe Thomas. It's really good. Like it's really, really good. Um, so uh, like I, I don't know. I think. I think the best way to fight that, what you're talking about ultimately though, is this, is again, look at the machine for how it's built and then slowly but surely make that machine obsolete. I think in- A I, part of that though is ensuring that those people get their place at the table. Yes. Which means sometimes people like me, as much as it sucks, are gonna have to step back, take an L for once, you know? Let them take my place for a little bit. Or. Or, or, or the, or and I'm not saying for this story. I think the best thing about what's coming up is everybody can find those places for themselves. And I think that's a, and I, I think, I think, I think a lot of people have been trying to, but are deliberately shut out. I well, think I, that's the point of privilege, right? Yeah. What's the point of having all of this privilege if you're just going to hoard it? I mean, I guess it means more for you, really. Um, but I mean, these people have been and are still deliberately oh, shut out of the industry and it's up no, to the people terrible. in the industry to, you know, make some space because and they've been picking away at it for a long time and getting nowhere. I agree. No, no, but like I said, this is, this, this is, like I said, I think it's the nature of the machines that have been built. And I don't know how, like, again, I asking some, like, this is a human nature, this is a, this is a human nature thing, right? Welch, like, like we talk about like oil, like we talk about oil being the big source of power going, it, it has been for the last hundred years. Now you have, human nature is those people have had pretty much all the privileges in the world. It doesn't matter what part of the world because they're the wealthiest. That's changing. And they're going to do whatever, they, whatever is natural. The natural thing is a lot of people do is if you want to survive, you pivot, right? If you're not really worried about survival and you're getting as much as you can get, you 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 fight it as much as you can. And if you look at it like some of the industries we're seeing today, like one of the things happening right now, like the big thing COVID has has kind of shown the world is a lot of the ways we've done things up until this point are slowly dying. Right. And if anything, if anything, the pandemic has sped up the decline and fall of a lot of things going forward. That's a good thing in one sense because some of these things need to go away. But the thing is, what what you're going to see now, going probably for the next ten years, and this is going to be our struggle for the next ten years, is the simple fact that it's 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 that battle is is between those people smart enough to pivot and those people that are going to hang on for as long as they can, because when it's over, they're not going to be around anymore, right? And and that. And I feel like, in, especially like in terms of publishing, publishing is somewhere in the middle of that. Publishing, I think traditional publishing is, is as it's been done to this point, is kind of a dinosaur, right? They've been cutting, they've been cutting their old formula for so long that I don't know if at, you, them to just pivot, it's like, like we're talking about, like the, the, the 80 year old can change, right? But you have to unlearn stuff and you have to slowly kind of pivot away from that. And no, and the longer you've been doing something a certain way, the harder that is to do. And the tendency, and again, the tendency is, I don't know if you've noticed, as I tend to notice this, is that publishing is, publishing in some ways is a very incurious business, ironically yeah. enough, right? So, yeah, and understandably so, right? Because the profit margins in publishing are actually a lot slimmer than people think. Yeah. So it's a huge risk to take a risk. Yes. So that's so part of what you're talking about is that the other part, but the other part of it too is I think what's happening now, and I, and I've noticed this too. I can create my own brand from the ground up. I may never get the recognition of an award from some of these bigger houses, but do I really need to if I'm getting paid? Right. And I think, and I think, and I think what 
what I think is going to happen in the net, and it's been happening in a bunch of genres already. I think it's going to happen more and more. I think that the as the big five become the big four, the big three, the big two, and ultimately the big one or two, right? You're going to see their their hold on the market shrink because it has to because they 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 are trying to pivot to survive based on a formula that has they have known for a very very long time. Now they may get some outward connections to keep them afloat because that's, that again media the, the business of publishing is not just selling the book but selling the game the movie the the audio rights the world right blah 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 for another conversation for another day but um that i i i think i think i think the I think there's a lot of opportunity for those voices to be represented kind of going forward. I don't necessarily know it's going to be traditional publishing that's going to do it, though. And that's a very... No, but even still, yeah. in order for that to happen, some of us with the privilege are going to have to step back. Mm -hmm. I mean... <laughs> No, 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 no. Like, like, like that. Like, again, we're, we're like, we're just having, we're just having this. I think this is a good discussion to have on on the show. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's why we do this stuff. Um, no, that, but that's, but that's what I see. Like, that's kind of what I. That's how I kind of see the next ten years. Is we are going into another. We're going into it like, and I've always said that the future could either be another renaissance or ruin, depending on how you look at it. But the, the renaissance part of it is. Um, new problems, force new solutions, force change, force growth, force evolution, and um, and uh, I think I truly do think that um, um, we're cut, we're at that precipice. I I agree. With, like there should be a lot more. Again, I look at. N.K. Jemison is an amazing writer, and it's not just her. There's, there's so many, like even historically, Samuel Delaney. Um, like, there's just been so many great voices that are you know, not gotten the respect that they deserve, right? Until far, far long past when they should have. And and like I said, I just don't, I don't knew. Yeah, I don't like. Like I said, it like those require risk, and. I, 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 and while the profit margins are narrow, every business sooner or later has to take those risks. And I think publishing is kind of at that point where they either they will take those risks or they won't. I'm a betting man. I say they don't because again, I, I, history has told me they won't long term. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll but see. I'm okay with like letting somebody else. Take this one. I'm all right. No, with and, and, and the whole with, need for sensitivity readers, and then maybe not publishing no, it if it doesn't pass the whiff test. You know? No, no. And, and honestly, like it's your story. Do what the hell you want. Like you're, you're the boss. I'm. Just, I like. I, I just thought this would be a fun discussion, and all things considered, oh, yeah, yeah. and probably a necessary one. So. Yeah, uh, it definitely is a yeah. necessary one. So, but please do the awkward assassin. Please, please. please. I, <laughs> I will see if I can come up with a compelling enough story for the awkward assassin. It's a great title. No, no, honestly, not is it a great title. I mean, it's really hard. Just, just do a short story. Like, just, just, just do like, look, just, do a, just do a short story about like just an awkward mission gone awry. I think the last time it. I attempted a short story, it turned into a two novel saga. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. So it, listen, if it does, if, if if it does happen, if it truly does happen, the awkward assassin say it does happen, and it comes out like this epic saga. Are you, can you can you can you acknowledge? Can you say it's all my fault? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I will blame you entirely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna be running through my head now. The story that I'm trying to turn in, or, or that I'm looking at turning into a, a stage play, has been in the back of my head like seven years mm -hmm. and i've only just figured out how it would work so the awkward assassin might happen now that the seed's been planted we never know yeah well, no, hey, hey, listen i just again folks just go watch your twitch stream listen to her commentaries and if you don't actually don't believe that there isn't a story there 
she's lying. You just have to listen to it, right? Like the it's character. literally me just cussing and no, telling everyone not, to take a not, shot no, because no, I got no, spotted. It's not, it's not literally you just cussing. That's part of the. That's part of the fun. Part of the fun is you will actually commentate and move my Okay, you gotta be here. You're gonna be. Oh shit! He's right. He's seeing me. <laughs> There's a like it's a built-in story. Like it's a built-in punchline. It's just like you don't even have to. I don't think it's that hard, right? <laughs> it's just one of those. It's just one of those things where it's just like again. Yeah, it's like, like I go go to the bar after. It's like how can you? How do you get caught? Just I I can't help it. Like. <laughs> I'm just special that way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just like one of those things, right? Um, <laughs> let's see. Oh, God. Um, yeah. I think we have an interview here. What do you think? Uh, I think that is good. Yeah. Oh, um, can I plug my Twitch well, channel? I was, just... I, was about, I, was, I was about to let you plug all, all your Oh, oh I, 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 was, I was... The reason I mentioned story stuff earlier, like, if you... I, did you really like if you had released something or if you had done something in the last year? We, I mean, we, we, we could pimp the shit out of that, right? And so, yeah, question, um, so we went down I've, to this wonderful design about you know, uh, privilege, like all like that, all that stuff is like there. It's important to publishing that we have that discussion with, which I'm totally for, but it was just one of those things where it's just like, wait, what it, it was quietly, I was also asking. Did you like without actually asking it? Did you release anything? In, like, because I released two books in the last year, so I mean, it was just one of those things where just like I no, I do have a finished manuscript, um, but I'm shopping for an agent, so I'm not releasing okay. it just yet. No, so okay, we'll go, we'll go down this last path, then we go to the. <laughs> I, have sure. last, I have one last. I have one last little thing we can go down here. Mm -hmm. So what? So. You've definitely you got your share books out there. Mm -hmm. So, what are your goals for World Dominant? Like, what would you like to do with your writing? Like, where would you want to see it and take it from here? Uh, honestly, yeah. I I don't even want to be filthy rich. I just want to earn enough from my writing that I can live my life. I would like it to pay my for my house and my food and my utilities, please. That's really all I want. I don't have to be filthy rich. No, that's fine. No, you don't need to be filthy. No, you don't need to be filthy rich. And like, no. that, 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 that's I not. just, I would like to be supported. That's all, with my okay. writing. So, I, I guess, which leads to the secondary tier question. Indie, hybrid, traditional, crowdfunding. I could not do crowdfunding. Um, not just because I just I find it. Again, awkward to ask a whole bunch of people, hey guys, I'm going to write a book and I'm going to publish it, but I need you to pay for all the stuff that a publisher would normally pay for. I don't, it's not something that I'm not, comfortable I, with I, doing. No, it's, it's fine. I'm just, I'm asking like, because crowdfunding, like, and the reason I separate crowdfunding from indie, they are different now. Like you need there, there's there is a very it's a very different approach and a very different set of goals than even an indie an indie straight indie book. Mm -hmm. has. That's why I'm I'm bringing this up like that. Yeah, no, no, it's just crowdfunding is not something I'm okay. comfortable with just yet. Maybe that might change. Honestly, I'm really happy with the small publisher I have. I just would like like a broader reach would help a lot. So getting an agent will give whatever manuscripts I've got the best chance. So, so I, I, if I were, can I, can I, can I make a dumb, dumb assumption? And if I'm wrong, please correct me. Sure. Okay. So you would enjoy, you would, you want to reach that maximize your living expense. You don't necessarily care where so much you're published as long as you're well, getting, okay. Mm, it depends. If uh, if the place I'm getting published at also is not like is not good, is not basically like a bad place for the world, maybe skip on that particular publisher. 
Okay, but we can't name names on the air on this one because I, I neither of us have the bank account for that. But um, <laughs> which I, I mean, which is why I'm, I really like Renaissance Press. Both yeah. Skylark and Daughters of Britain are published through Renaissance Press, um, and I'm hoping that they'll pick up the rest of my backlist because honestly, self publishing is not for me. I don't have the marketing skill set, skill set, and honestly, I couldn't be asked. But <laughs> um. Uh, I also really like, because they have the editorial support, um, but they're run, um, they're LGBTQA friendly, they have a lot of own voice books, they give a lot of um, airtime to authors who would have difficulty getting seen in the broader market. Um, I really like their ethics and ethos, so I like working with Renaissance Press, I think they're a fabulous author, and I'm... I'm happy with the people that run the company. They're good people. Okay, so I just want the bigger reach. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, there's nothing wrong with wanting the bigger reach. I, so I, so I'm gonna ask this: mm. Where would you like to go? If you have to go bigger, where would you like to go? Um, I uh, was looking. I haven't researched it properly yet because it's sort of only just come across my my dash. But I really was looking at uh, Rebellion Publishing. Okay. You know, like a good place, and uh, Golance also is a place that seems pretty decent. Okay. Uh, as long as you have a see, I, I have this really fun little belief, and this is this is this is this is this is me maybe being a little crazy and making things, but I, I have this I have this tendency to think that if the clearer your vision of where you want to go, the more likely it's going to happen. Because if you're like, like. If you have the vague stuff like I want to be rich and shameless and do this thing, like like it's not less likely to happen if I were to say this, I want to publish things on my own, do some stuff. I have a big mouth. I can market it to death all on my own, right? And then obviously when I do get into more traditional markets, I'll already have a built-in audience so I can help support me. And also as I use this platform to get even bigger. And then when I go away from it again, because inevitably I feel like traditional publishing at this point for most of us is it's we're on a platform for a set amount of time and that's it now because it's necessarily a bad thing i don't want people to get that idea but it's, it's a business and like all businesses mm. we all have it we have we have a shelf life now it might just be that sm carrier has a shelf life of 15 books i might have a shelf life of one it might be the other way around although somehow i don't think so she writes good stuff guys but um <laughs> but um but the thing, but the thing I'm, I, the reason I bring this up like this is this, like, I think having a clear map of where you want to go, how you want to go about doing things, it will give you increase your chances of getting them. Right. And that's, and that's, you know, and it's cool that you know what you're good at and you know what you're not comfortable at. Mm -hmm. um, although, like I said, for you, I like, seriously, yeah, your stream is great marketing as is. I think, I think I, I, and not just, not just the commentary, not just, not just the fact that you're humorous, do you. I, and honestly, I, and I, and I mean that like in the best possible way, you are on, you, you are completely yourself. And when you, and when you're out there and you're doing that, I think that's the best form of marketing because honestly, I like Sonia because I like Sonia. Because I like Sonia, I'm going to check out her books. Not because, not because I may necessarily want to. I do want to read your books. Don't take this the wrong way. I may not might not want to read your books right for the there, but I want them because I want to support you. Because I believe in you as a person. I want you to achieve good things. So I'll do what little I can to help you along the way. Yeah. Buy my books, guys. Yeah. Oh God, that felt dirty. <laughs> no. You know what? No, honest, honestly, I, I, like, let's be honest here. We're gonna, we're gonna get to the plugging stuff here, and then maybe this, and the last, last thing. So we are getting to the plugs, <laughs> right? It's okay to talk about people buying your work. One, like, I, I, I honestly, I think, I think people get really caught up in the sales and money. And it's like, ew, it's evil and stuff like that. It's not. Well, no. That, right, it's not. You busted your ass on your books. You work hard on everything you do. And you and honestly, like in this thing, this is the this is my inner pro wrestling fan coming out here a little bit here. 
right? I love Macho Man Randy Savage, but you know, but you know what? Macho Man Randy Savage was a smart man, and here's why he was a smart man: because he was able to talk people into buildings wearing what he wore, saying what he said. But he was very smart about it. He didn't actually say, "Come down to Boston Square Garden." Oh yeah, no, it's like, nope, the cream will rise to the top. And he would do these really crazy things on air. It would just be so outrageous, so larger than life, because he knew exactly what he was and what he was not. Right. The only thing I say to you is when we get to the plug, right? Say it proudly because honestly, you've earned it with everything. No, you've done. no you, I, I know it sounds like, I know it sounds really like, I, I, I hope it doesn't sound patronizing because it's not. Like, I respect the fact that you've put the effort you've put into you being you. And we, you've worked hard on everything you've done and everything you've accomplished. And that part of the marketing where you have to say, buy my book. Damn right, you're worth it. You're worth it. Still feels dirty though. Know what? <laughs> this is why I'm. This is why I cannot self-publish but, 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 because but, I'm so but, terrible at the marketing. But think of it like storytelling, because it's not that different. Like if you think of it instead, like as if you think of it, it's like ignore the fact that ignore the money part of this. Like ignore it. Like think about what you're trying to actually do. Is you're going to tell a story? You're 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 trying to because as a writing as a writer. The hardest thing, what we're trying to do is we're trying to convince a reader to invest time in our books, right? Because they're awesome. And of course they're awesome. You work your ass off on them, right? So instead of focusing on, instead of focusing on the sale, focus on the story of why your book is awesome. And if you can do it in a way and do it in a way that's authentically you, Right, it can be awkward. In fact, maybe it's better that it is, right? But it will right, right. be. Yes, it <laughs> will be. I promise. <laughs> right. I, I mean, and I and I say this because I want. I, I say it like this because that's like whether you are traditionally published or you're self-published or any of these things. There is that little. That's the part. It doesn't matter what, what art form you're into, whether you're acting, you're illustrating, you're writing, any of those things, right? There has to be that little bit of you that is excited about your work. So find that piece of yourself that you're willing to share to the world. And it can be awkward. There's no rules about what it looks like. But make it make it make it come out. She's blushing again. This is funny. <laughs> Because I'm not saying anything terrible. No. No. <laughs> but she's blushing. This is funny. Um, right? It is I just I say it like that because I, I, I feel I feel that this is like we we're talking about unlearning shit earlier. Artists have been taught like like a lot of us are taught that sales is a dirty word. It's not really about it's not about the money, it's about the relationship. It's about mm -hmm. the fact that you are trying to establish a relationship with your readers and and maybe they become friends. Maybe they don't. Like again, it depends on whatever your quote unquote business model is. Well, that's that 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 is for smarter people than me to figure out. But I will what I will say though is, yeah. You have like be passionate about it, that's all. Be you. And it, it'll work out because honestly, you're great. And don't ever oh, doubt Thanks. You're all right. awesome too. Yeah, <laughs> more, 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 more awkward blushing. This is this is phenomenal because the, the best part is I don't even have to try. This is oh yeah, yeah. yeah I'm not sure. Like like you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, don't apologize. <laughs> it's not your fault <laughs> that I find compliments super awkward and uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah, but I do think we have an interview. Now we can get to the whole wonderful plugging of stuff because I I just wanted I just wanted to hear I did want to hear where you wanted to go like as somebody that wants to see you succeed. I just you know if there's anything no, I can do that's yeah um but on that note guys I, I this is Sonia I really really dig her she's she's great so she's got books to plug and and things to find so <laughs> yeah. um so you can find all of my titles on my website uh s dot m oh no wait smcadiari.com there are no dots in there it's just smcadiari.com um, slash titles um, or you can go to Renaissance Press where Daughters of Britain and um, 
Oh, look at that. I know. It came up in the chat. Daughters of Britain and um, Skylark are published. Um, and also, I live stream my terrible gameplay every Friday evening from 7 till 10-ish. Um, so join me this Friday. I'll be in my pajamas because it's Easter. <laughs> so so, so is, it, is it your name? Yeah, it's uh, twitch.tv slash smkr. Like that, see? Yes. Um, yeah. I'm going to double check that because I yeah, might yeah, be yeah, wrong. You should, double, you should double check that. And and you can always you can go on Twitch yourself and actually, like, you know, write, 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 it, in your, write it in as well because it's just one of those um, – things we do um but i just want people to know no um she's really cool i i i met her at cancon i was really impressed with the way ways sonia carries herself right she's really cool and a lot of fun we've had for two hours about everything I yeah made you laugh, <laughs> made you blush i made you think made me think it was good yeah it was good thanks for that i'm yeah. super glad i got to connect with you again yeah. Um, I was hoping we'd do it this year, last year, sorry, 2020 at CanCon, but, you know, the world, so. <laughs> There's a small chance we'll do it this year. I'm pretty sure we'll do it next year. Oh, gosh, I hope so next year. I, 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 I honestly, I honestly, th I, I honestly think next year it's, I don't know if we're going to be all the way out, like I said, but I, you can kind of, I don't know, I just get the sense it's, it's going to wind down a little bit this year. Um, next year, it will be like, okay, we're most of the way back. But I do, I like, so in the event, in the event, I don't, uh, there's a chance to see it today at this time, but um, for sure next year, um, yeah. for sure next year, I might, I might be coming in in like a mystery machine because at that point, I probably just be on the road traveling because I, 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 I mean, I know what I want to do with my life, so I'm just going to go do it. So that sounds awesome. Yeah, I'm going to keep trying to do what I want to do with my life, and hopefully, I'll get there. <laughs> you will. Oh, no, thank I, you. No, 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 no doubt. You will. Just, just, just. Yeah, like don't be yourself. It'll work out for everybody else. Listen, listen, watching this right now, you can hit the follow button on my Twitch channel, twitchtv slash podcast. See that wonderful thing. Come watch my videos if you want to do that. I'm also on YouTube as well as Joshua Cantolaresco. I have books too. You can buy those. Um, you can listen to this podcast pretty much on any platform you like. Um, tomorrow I got another really cool guest. But for now, guys, stay inspired. Keep shining in the dark. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. Bye.